On today's episode, the Stanley Cup playoff picture is starting to take shape. Frank the Tank called up the Preds and the Wild. They're all going streaking. Looks like the NHL is going Hollywood, and Amazon is giving us a behind-the-scenes series following a bunch of star players. And is that Atlanta's music? Gary taking a team back down south? Ice is ready, and we are back with another episode of the Empty Netters podcast, fresh from Jackson, Wyoming. We're going to jump into all of the unbelievable hot ice and the crazy stuff going on in the league, but we've got to talk about this trip first. A massive, massive thank you. To, is it the Jackson Moose or the Jackson Hole Moose? Jackson Hole Moose. To the Jackson Hole Moose. People, hey, well, first of all, I was about to say, if you were in Wyoming and you don't know about the Moose, you got to go to these games, but apparently everybody in Wyoming knows about the Moose because everyone in Wyoming was at the games Friday and Saturday night. Absolutely electric environment going on in the Black Diamond Hockey League in Jackson. It was so fun, man. I have so much love for the Jackson Hole Moose. I have so much love for Jackson Hole, Wyoming. It was my first time there. Such an unbelievable town. One of those places, Blakey, when you get there and you just look out, you go, damn, this country is very beautiful. Yeah. Seriously. It was just a really miraculously wonderful place. Skiing wasn't even great conditions. Still a blast. Spring skiing, Bluebird Day was ripping down in just like a t-shirt or a sweatshirt. Was totally fine. You're up on the mountain looking out gorgeous gorgeous stuff and then the hockey man wow the black diamond league that the jackson hole moose play in so cool what they do so cool that these little ski towns offer this up to the people um i thought that this phase of my life was over hmm. that was the coolest part about it we we got a but you know a group of college buddies who throw this team together. I know a ton of people have done this before. Lots of our buddies from New England and their respective schools have thrown groups together and done this. So if you guys have done this before, and a lot of you already DM'd us, but DM us so we can all talk about it. It's so much fun. Uh, it was right back into like real deal game day vibes. It was, you know, first game was wake up, morning skate, breakfast, take a nap, eat lunch, go to the rink three hours early, get In your dynamic. What's that? In a suit? No, no we suit. almost, we almost the one, had suits, yeah. <laughs> that was the one missing piece. But uh, it was really cool. It felt like this awesome reliving of a moment, a reliving of a chapter phase that was just so fun. Sewer ball in the hallway before a game. I was yeah. just about to ask. Yep. Oh, yeah. It was incredible, dude. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, Dan said it perfectly. It's just like you forget what that really feels like. You know, you play Definitely. beer league, and I take beer league seriously, but you forget like three 20-minute stop time, massive crowd, want to win so bad you know just like it's a, it fires you right up taking hits yeah. dude yeah like it was yeah. it was awesome taking dude. hits and not taking chances with the puck yeah <laughs> yeah right yeah exactly dude like, no last man toeies you know yeah. You're like oh shit not it's not putting him on blast because it was bullshit and the guy got an immediate penalty talking about taking hits this fucking dude just took a running start when cp wasn't even close to the puck yet and just ran him cp popped up like a fucking 15 year olds little boner Dude. <laughs> wore it wore it and got up immediately i would say i took the two hardest hits you did of the weekend both both were blatant penalties and were called immediately yeah but it was hilarious because i was like when i was getting there i was like I'm, I'm not gonna not play physical but i'm not like here to head i'm not gonna try to lay someone out open ice like i'll bang <laughs> in the corner a little bit and, yeah. and we're good and i'm certainly not going to put myself in a position to get drilled and I in the, in the first game, Dan, we like I think it was right off a of, uh, center ice draw. It goes like D to D. I'm playing wing. Our defenseman passes one off the boards to me, and I'm kind of like looking back. But right as he passes it, I already know I'm in a bad situation because I'm like, oh, this dude's coming. I'd like to come to Chris's defense. The pass had not even been thrown yet. Like Chris was looking for the pass, and this dude was already ripping at him. That's how cheap it was. And it was this guy that hits a lot, so I knew he was out there because I saw it before the faceoff. So, like, as the puck is about to be passed, I go like this and look back to just see where he is so I can know what I'm going to do with the puck when <laughs> I get it. There. And, dude, as I turn around, he's, like, literally at a full torpedo launch already at me. And I go like this. I just try to fall on my own because I was like, dude, I'm about to get buried, which also just dropped my head to, like, his torpedo shoulder level, <laughs> dude, like literally drilled me right in the head. And I'm like, Doosh! and like, you know, when a QB slides and gets smashed, it almost looks worse. Cause he was like, I think that's what happened. Cause everyone was like, Oh no, Chris is dead. <laughs> and I was like, I'm okay. It was the most <laughs> intense brotherly reaction I've ever had in my life. I was on the bench, saw it. And I was up screaming profanities at this dude. 
And I heard him. I it heard was him. pretty close. And if he was closer, I would have with my stick, like a guy behind the stage pulling a bad act off of the stage, I would have raked him in with my stick around the neck. I was so furious. Just tomahawked it. Oh yep. my god. It was unbelievable. It was uh it was fucking wild. The like like it happens and you're like, holy Shit, no, it, it reminds me yeah. of uh, senior men's hockey in Canada. Like every small town in Canada, like that is the thing. Like yeah. you just have the senior men's team, yeah. and like every Saturday night, that's where everyone goes to. Like I wonder, like when one of these games are going on, like is the local grocery store, is the local post office just a complete ghost town? Because no yeah, yeah, one yeah, the everybody town, there, Close everyone the is at the arena. It like, was really great. You could like. see around the rink there were adverts everywhere. Oh. For all of the restaurants we had been going to yeah, the yeah. past two days. <laughs> it's such a cool little town yep. vibe. Dude. And I'll tell you what, man, even in big cities, like even in LA, it's a great pregame. If you oh, had like a, yeah. if you had a good LA beer league that played at seven o'clock on Friday nights, it would be a great hey, like that old rink in Culver City. Yeah. It would be like a great go there, get the get the cheapest beers in town, get lubed up for the night. It's an awesome vibe. Uh the last thing I'll say is we I, I brought a halfie and a cage, and at morning skate, I skated in a halfie because, like, a bunch of most, I mean, their whole team has halfies on, and like half of our guys did. And I was like, Yeah, maybe I'll use the halfie because it just like looks cooler and it's a sick experience. And then right before the game, I was like, Ah, f it, dude, like, I'm putting a cage on, just don't want to <laughs> catch a rogue stick or whatever. That hit would have broken my nose because, like, it would have just, he would have hit me directly oh, yeah. in the open face. For sure. And I was like, And my first thought as I popped up was like, Thank fuck. God, I put this cage on. Yeah. <laughs> it's insane. Speaking of big illegal hits right now, we're going to transition right into our no bucky warm up and start with the Matt Rempe suspension. What do you guys think? Four games for this? You kidding me? Free Rempe, dude. Yeah, I mean, I don't <laughs> agree. Uh, I thought that this was one of the most. Uh, just good job by everybody. I yeah. thought it was, he got tossed from the game. He deserved to get tossed from the game. He got a four game suspension. He deserved a four game suspension. I could have seen it being five. Uh, we tweeted about it, kind of posted it on our IG, the tweet as well being like, what do you guys think? I was actually very proud of Rangers fans. I'd say 80% were like, yep, you know, sounds about right. And the comparison I gave him was, He's an overexcited puppy. Mm. And I think he is. I, I think he has been this big guy, this enforcer guy. He's finally getting his shot in the league. And he's going out there and he's fighting and everyone's happy. And now he's happy and he's smiling and his tail is wagging. So he's just running around trying to murder people. And I just think he needs to figure it out. He needs to figure out how to play. And it's, it's one of those funny things where I know Rangers fans love him. And if I were a Ranger fan, I would love him too. And as a just bystanding fan i i still i also love him i think he's exciting to watch i think it's a good piece for new york but he needs to figure out how to use his body and how to fit into this game if he's actually going to be valuable for them in the playoffs because if he's taking penalties like that in the playoff game trying to be a difference maker he's going straight out of the lineup immediately yeah you can't be pulling a cadre uh like no. a couple of years ago when he and cadre's on the leaf he did back, like every three like two did, years in a row two or years something. in a yeah. row you got a big old suspension in the, the back half of that first round yep. of series and that's the only reason toronto lost correct um yeah, it's like a, like the puppy thing. He's literally like a Great Dane puppy. Like yeah, you've seen those things. They're, he doesn't know huge. that he's bigger than the other dogs. Yeah, exactly. Total perfect comp. Um, yeah, no, I, I think it was right, and it was accumulation thing, right? We said that before. Yeah. Like it was almost like, dude, <laughs> you you're getting four games at least. Even if some people are saying that one was only worth the of two, I'm like, yeah, I know, but all the other ones added up to four combined. So yeah. there you go. Um, I had a couple friends, Kit, dude, was saying, like, he was like, I didn't think his elbow was out that far. Oh. And I was like, his elbow's hanging, dude. Like, he puts yeah. that across his jaw. The real thing I wanted to ask you about is the comments made after about him not answering the bell. Um, I actually have flip-flopped in my own head about this. I don't know where I feel on, like, part of me thinks you should be able to go no to a fight. If someone's like, hey, you want to toss today? And you go, no, no, thank you, because I it's not right for my team or whatever. And that player should have the right to do that. But... After you railroad Bastion, I'm like, there is a code, I think, of the, yeah. of the fighters that I'm like, I have to I have to drop here. I think that's right. You know that I stand heavily in the, I think, answering the bell is so yeah. stupid sometimes. But that one, when you got tossed from a game for how dirty your hit was on Bastion, 
And Rangers fans, that was a dirty hit on Bastion. Yeah. So was the elbow. It's okay. Doesn't make him a dirty player. There were bad hits, though. Uh, I think he should have, especially with just what is going on and what he's doing. Right. Um, I thought it was a little aggressive to say, lost respect for him. That felt a little petty. Yeah, um, maybe that's But right. at the same time, I, you know, I get it. There's history between these two teams. You're you're kind of talking shit. You want to stick up for your guys. I have no problem with it. Well, and it's McDermott, you know, trying to, uh, for context, McDermott was the one uh, who New Jersey recently traded for and became their, you know, enforcer and tried fighting Rempe before the game or, you know, setting the fight yeah. up in Warhols and tried fighting yeah. in the first period. Siegenthaler hit happens later on. He gets kicked out. So he doesn't get the chance to s- step up for the Siegenthaler hit. Um, but I think it, the comments that McDermott said after the game, I think those are stemming from he's pissed off that it, you know, it didn't go his way. Also, he's trying to stay in the league, right? Like yeah. he's trying to still keep himself relevant. So he views that fight, not getting that fight, as him losing an opportunity to prove his worth and continue Definitely. to stay as Definitely. an NHLer. Love yeah. that. Uh, my own, I, I, I do just think the two... Uh, the two things that people were defending it were the, uh, you know, he's a guy with no prior incidents. And I'm like, he's been kicked out of games in two of 10 games in his career. He has plenty of, like, yeah. that's, he has yeah. prior, incidents. prior incidents. And then people defending the elbow. Like, as someone said to me, there's like, dude, he was clearly trying to pull up. And I'm like, shut the f- up. Man. Yeah. Like that. It's just, it's, it's fine. He's just got to figure out how his body works in this fast pace of a game because that was a brutal elbow. Yep. So, um, okay, moving on from ramps. Speaking about loose heads, dude. Nice <laughs> transition, Chris. <laughs> S- loose heads turning into lost heads. The Yager bobbleheads gone. Happened last week. 18,000 bobbleheads for bobblehead night stolen from a shipping crate. This, we've talked about the drama of this year. I, this is amazing. Yeah. I loved this story so much. And if I were a Pittsburgh fan at the game set to get one of the bobbleheads, I wouldn't be mad at all because this is such a funny story. It's the heist of the century, dude. It's unbelievable. Season of hell for yeah. Pittsburgh, too. How do you lose that? That's got to be a big shipping crate. Oh, massive. Like, what the f- I I just think about, like, okay, it's probably like some you know mob that's going and, and stealing these kinds of things or doing these big heists. You're going I, full mob with yeah, it. Oh, yeah. yeah. Think, Oh, All right, yeah. you think this is like uh, the League of Shadows. We're going yeah. Batman style. This <laughs> is a imagine. organization, a criminal organization, stealing a shipping container off of a either a truck going through a tunnel. Off, of, I, I'd really like it to have been off a ship. It was a ship out here in California. It was a ship. Yeah. 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 Hell so yeah. Probably, okay. you know, probably just down the down the highway yeah. in uh, Long Beach there, but. Um, yeah, I I I imagine like the you know the henchmen steal steal the shipping crate and then they bring it back to like the bosses. They're like, all right, boss, we got your stuff, and they yeah. go open it up and they're like, what the f- this? Yeah, because <laughs> it was supposed to be a shipment of you know baby wipes that you cut open and there's actually a Blowing. bunch of illegal substances in the baby wipes. Yeah. yeah, and then they but they open this one up and it's Yager bobbleheads <laughs> and the boss is like. You're all dead. Obviously. You better pray yeah. that boss is a huge Pittsburgh fan. Yeah. You better, yeah. You better, no. You better hope that those bobbleheads just somehow have some illegal substances yeah, buried yeah. in those yeah. heads. Yeah. Oh, maybe that's it, dude. Maybe that was the play all along. This went perfectly. The heist went correctly. There is something in the bobbleheads. Well, I really like now that. So let's let's put it all together. Pitch on your pitch. Yeah. Let's say. They were stealing a shipment of baby wipes that they were then going to stuff with black tar heroin. Yeah, yeah but yeah. now it's Yager bobbleheads, and they go, "Listen, we've got to work. We've got to operate with. Yeah. We've got to work with what we've got, you know." And now they're figuring out how to stuff these bobbleheads with black tar heroin. Yeah, and the good it's news all is, in the mullet. that head is big. Dude. Yeah, you gonna pop that hut off? There's no longer a spring in there. There's a nice balloon of heroin or cocaine <laughs> yeah. in there. Uh, and when you get that bobblehead, it's not shaking. That's how you know. Also, trying to offload yeah. 1,800 Yager <laughs> Like I don't know what so you're supposed you, to do. They're like, okay, we got to sell them. We got to make, even if there's no drugs in them. I think you'd like, be surprised, <laughs> dude. I think you'd be surprised how much stuff overseas just goes. Like, yeah. you take that to Asia, people are buying them, right? I, I, I have no, you know, prior experience or knowledge of this, but like, I'm sure you could find a way I to sell them. I think you can yeah. ship those around. Maybe, I mean, it's, it, like, 18,000 is, is a it's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot of bobbleheads. <laughs> Maybe it's like a hundred. It's like, yeah, you could sell that to a store. I think store. one of us is going to be on vacation in Asia in the next <laughs> 10 months. 
and we're going to stop at some rinky dink shop on the side of the corner and you're just going to see a Yager bobblehead being because that's I, I, yep. that's where they are. Yep. Like those Absolutely correct. Those bobbleheads are in Vietnam right now being sold and people are like this, "Oh, look at this cool. It's a cool bobblehead. That's yep. awesome." And like <laughs> under it it says like authentic NHL bobblehead and it's that's correct. It is an authentic yeah. NHL bobblehead. Hell yeah. So those are getting shipped, dude. Yeah. Black market stuff. And I like it. Me too. Moving on. Race for Celebrini. We have talked about this a lot and sort of what we expected, right? The yeah. Three teams in major contention, I suppose, are the Sharks, Blackhawks, and Ducks. I'm not changing my pick. I, I've, I've been on Blackhawk watch this whole time. I think it's rigged. I think Bedard was rigged, and I think they're just going Taves Kane part two, and now it's Bedard Celebrini. They've got history. They want to play together. Great. I will say it's just it it will continue to be a shame to me if the ducks and the sharks just get jobbed over and over again and yeah. never are given the first like give them if you're going to keep them around give them a goddamn first overall. Yeah, it feels like the ducks are going to get shafted again. I know. Yeah. It does. And I'll be honest, but that's not shafted though. If the du yeah, if, if it ends no. the way it is right right now, which obviously it might not, the but I'm just saying that's not shafting. We'll have the third highest, yep. and you're right, Chris. That wouldn't be a shafting. I'll be honest, man. Maybe this is because we just were down there and talking with Frank. I would be thrilled to be if if I was a first overall pick and it was the Ducks. Yeah, yeah. You're telling me I'm getting sent down to Orange County and playing with the insane youth that they have. That'd be awesome. Dude, what? Or go ahead. Well, to that point, the insane youth. That's why, and we we think and and somewhat all agree that this is rigged. That's why I think he won't go to the Ducks. Like they're like, okay, the Ducks have enough yeah. good quality young core. They're going to get another piece. They don't need the piece. Yeah. Who needs the piece? Chicago or, or probably the Sharks. Yeah. I think. I mean, Chicago literally doesn't have players. Doesn't have players. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what I think is fascinating, and I would love to we can put our heads together and fact check this later. The let's just throw Columbus in too cuz they're the four, they have the fourth worst record right yeah, now. Yeah. The I'd be I'd, I would want to stay no offense, I would want to stay so far away from that organization right Yes, now. but I'm just Columbus? saying yeah. I'm, they still have the bubonic plague and I need to I need them cleared. Yeah. I need a vaccine brought in and I need them cleared before I go anywhere near them. I'm hard pressed to think of a draft year where there's a really really premier piece going first and all four of the four worst teams have a super young elite piece mm. that they like just got or are about to get in the case of like Will Smith on the shark. You know what I mean? Like normally you go, oh, wow, Celebrini and Bedard would be epic. The other guys don't really have that. And I'm like, you get Celebrini and Fants. You get Celebrini and Carlson and Cutter. You get Celebrini and Will Smith. You know, those I'll, are these cool duos. I'll be honest, everywhere. though, those, those two are our boys in Smitty and, and Cutter. Yeah. But I don't don't include them with the guys that you're talking about in Leo Bedard and Fants because those three guys have played. Yep. We know that they're good and at each other. And that's three players. of the four. So yeah, it's just the Sharks. Uh, so I'm saying, yeah. I, I think the Sharks, and they are currently, they have the best odds. Like, it should be them. Because yeah. all those three teams, or those three guys in Bedard, Carlson, and Fants have played in the NHL, and we can we have seen that they can play yep. in the NHL. The Sharks are a team that I'm like... More of a question yep, for sure. they have Smitty, but like, they should get it. But like, epic to go... The top two teams in college hockey right now are yeah. BU and BC, and you're getting the best player off of both of those teams mm. to be rookies at the same time. And I'm like, that is sick, dude. Yeah. That would be crazy. <laughs> Isn't um, is Iserman going in this draft? He is, right? Cole Iserman. Yeah. Yes. He, and, but so he's, he's not playing right now at, at BU, even though he's committed, obviously. Yeah. So, he's, so he's still with the NTDP. Yeah. Um, and I think he's going to be a steal for somebody. Well, so he came into the year as kind of the consensus number two, and since the year has started, he's, dropped. he's just been dropping, and that's not to his fault, to a degree. It's a lot of the other players beneath him just getting that extra yeah, step of development and extra eyes on them. The last so, mock I saw, he was like eighth overall. Yeah, and there's so a chance. Like, he should still go top 10, but there's some really, really intriguing defensemen in this. Yeah, there's a lot of European guys yeah. who are solid. Yeah, like so. the Michigan State guy. Oh, Yeah, so I mean, look, any team who's going to get in this lottery, they're going to get a good player, but who is going to get that premium yeah. guy? Yeah. Who's going to get the sick duo? Yeah, I still want San Jose to get him. Just because of that that uh, Bay Area connection with his dad, yeah, yeah. we'll see that is what cool. uh, what uh, young Gerald does. All right, let's go from the Celebrini race to the President's Trophy race. Yep, 
A lot of teams that are very neck and neck here for the President's Trophy. Do you feel like that is something any team is thinking about and going for and or avoiding? I don't think that any team in their right mind is avoiding it due to a superstition or curse. Yeah. Like, I don't think any team's like, dude, let's just let them pass us because yeah. like, whatever. Um, I do think teams can go, uh, we have done this dance before. I know what it takes. We got to win in the playoffs. If I want to rest some guys, I'm going to rest some guys yeah. and whatever. I don't if the president's trophy slips out of my fingertips. Boston being mm. a prime example. I don't think they get the Rangers, frankly. I don't think they get Um, I would even go as far as to say, I don't know that any team anymore. Like, truly. I don't think any team's like, yeah. let's chase, like, are the Canucks can chase the bees down and win this, win that baby. I think they're like, whatever, dude, just stay the one seed yeah. in our division. Like, I think that's all teams care about. Um, if you ask me who I think is going to win it, I think Florida's going to get it still. I've been saying that for a while. I think they're going to do it. Um, but I don't think they care. Yeah, I think the Rangers are going to get it personally. Um, I also think this with the new playoff, or it's not new anymore, but with the current playoff structure, it's weird how much the one seed does and doesn't matter at the same time. Um, what's interesting with the Boston and Florida race is them going for the president's trophy against each other is almost like also yeah. going for the one seed. It's yeah. not like it's between Boston and Vancouver. It's they, they, those two teams specifically, Boston and Florida, is a very unique one because they're racing against each other, I think more so because they want the one seed rather than they want the president's trophy, which is a, which is a tough dynamic. And it's funny because if we're looking at the current breakdown... And if Boston and Florida, let's say they do jump New York and they win the, the Atlantic, they'll be playing Detroit Yeah. as, as, as currently yeah, yeah, stands. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And that might be Detroit. It might be uh, Islanders. It might be Buffalo. Um, I think either team would probably rather any of those three than Toronto. Yes. Yeah, fair. I'd rather play the Maple Leafs. As a, as yeah. a Leafs fan, I'm saying this. Well, I, I was about to say, I think Florida's a stronger team than Boston. But if I'm Toronto, I would rather play Florida than Boston because of the boogeyman. I would just, yeah. I don't even want to deal with it. I would be like, you know, whatever. We're, we're the lower seed regardless. I think I'd rather Florida. No, you're not wrong. Um, yeah, you're not wrong. I, I think as a, as a Maple Leaf fan... I think it would hurt you to lose in the first round to Boston more than it would to Florida. Yes. Oh, absolutely. So, right? But I mean, think... both really sting because, again, you lost to Florida yeah. last yeah. year. But I, honestly, I think the only way out of this is through, and you yeah. got to go through your boogie. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's go. That's true. Yeah. But this ain't the year, dude. No. No, it's not. <laughs> I, I think Boston's more, I think, and so do you, but I think Boston's more beatable. Yeah. Um. Yeah, you're right, Dan. It's, it's interesting that... The all the teams in the top five right now, only Boston and Florida are in the same division. Yeah. So that's, I, I wouldn't shock me at all if the President's Trophy comes from one of those two due to the sure. need to battle for the one. That's team. what I think so too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you wonder, and this is this before we move on. We've talked about this year uh, possible in season tournaments, more incentive based things. I wonder if the president's trophy would have a different allure around it. If you did uh, like a premier league thing where winner of the president's trophy gets like a $5 million bonus. Mm -hmm. Or what about if you had to pick your first I just round? Just to say that, dude. Yeah. The President's Trophy gets to pick. Who be crazy. Play in the first Sorry, round. in the EPL, they get like a, a cash bonus. For... Yeah, you get cash bonuses for how high you finish in the table, and and there's no playoffs in EPL. It's True. you know yeah, you just you're still... you're crown champion with whoever has the most points after 38 games, and I'm not saying that obviously. I'm I am just saying like, <laughs> I think President's Trophy is right now it's a cool thing, and people put it in their trophy cabinet. They go, oh, we won the President's Trophy last year, but it doesn't mean. And it'd be kind of interesting if you went. 10, 10 million bucks to whoever wins it because that would help some teams, man. Like, the question then, though, does that money go to the players or does it go to the franchise slash the owner's pocket? Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah, it's got to go to the players. Yeah. Got to go to the players. Got to go to the uh, for it to make sense. Yeah. Yes. But you uh, know, it that goes the to their salary. Yes, yeah, say next twelve year. million more in the cap. <laughs> no, that, yeah, that, that, that would sorry. destroy parity. <laughs> uh, the curse. When's the last one? Twenty thirteen. Twenty thirteen. But I don't even count that because it was a fifty six game season. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's not the full eighty two. It's almost like they were playing good the whole fifty six, and yeah, then yeah. the playoffs finished. That was that just season. that was just finishing the president's trophy, yeah. basically. Um, if Florida wins the President's Trophy this year, curse gets broken. Oh, I like that a lot. Let's move from this race to another race, and that is the race for 70 goals for Austin Matthews. He has 55 and has how many? 15 games left? 17 games. 17, 17 games, games left. left. So he needs 15 goals in 17 games. Do you think it is out of reach, both of you? I was so positive he was going to get 70 recently obviously went on that crazy tear for stretch but like even before that i was like he's getting 70 maybe even like 72 (coughs) um and then i was like looking at the stats i wasn't totally tracking him game by game and just felt like he was kind of hovered at 53 or whatever it was for a while i went to his game logs i was like what is happening and it's so weird because he's not going on huge droughts but it's like goal zero zero goal zero zero goal you know and i was like ah fuck like that's not going to cut it yeah. at the pace he's been scoring, but he hasn't gone nuclear. Like that's the, in, in a yes. little while, I mean, that's the only thing with, I guess people look at that and they go goal a game, basically no chance. And I'm like, he could have four tomorrow, mm-hmm. you know, and then it's way easier. I love the guy. This happened to McDavid last year and I was so pissed. I thought he was going to flirt with 70 and he finished at like 60 and three. It's a long season. He's got fucking tired. They have more shit on their mind than him getting his goals. So this is a reckless take, but I, I'm still saying he does it. Um, cause I think if he gets close, if he gets close, it will become a bit of a priority, even if he won't admit it. So, so I'm, let's yeah. say, I'm saying he fucking does. To me, it's, uh, if he has a Hattie in the next three games, we're, we're in business. Exactly. If he doesn't, then I think it was funny to me. I thought he would be the type of guy to care about this. And I don't mean Same. that in a selfish way. I mean it in a, I like how he pushes himself. I like how he sets benchmarks. He loves scoring goals. 70 was sniffable, and I thought he was going to be like put on the gas. They're in a weird spot in the playoffs where they're not jumping Boston or Florida, and I don't think they're falling below Tampa. So they're kind of locked at three, it feels like, to an extent. And so I don't really think that there's an incentive for him to bust his ass to get these goals and put his team in a bad position or put himself in a bad position. Exactly. Like probably he could co- get sat like the last. Yeah, you're probably game. cool enough Good here call. to just get ready for playoffs, and I don't hate that at all. We so, always feed him some empty netters, though. Uh, Come on. Again, Hattie in the next three games, we're in business. If not that, it's over, in my opinion. Yeah, you guys are spot on. I think I agree. He needs like a, a one of those hat trick games. So he had this five game span in the month of February where he scored ten goals, or yeah, ten goals in five games two hat tricks in that span <coughs> that's what he needs he yep. needs one of those hat trick nights and to have that kind of hot streak again because you know right now he's looking like a bust yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> unbelievable um before we uh move on to the next or to the next big segment let's talk playoff hockey real quick mm-hmm. because we're getting a couple of games that feel like playoff hockey we had the uh panthers and lightning and then we had the rangers and islanders obviously close you know, in-state matchups, teams hate each other. Both games were fireworks all over the place. Um, Blake, you said that the NHL needs those matchups in the first round. Yeah, the NHL needs this from a fanboy fan base point of view, just from a, a general like story point of view within the NHL. Like that first round is like arguably more valuable than the Stanley Cup final because you have all those teams playing. And if you could have those rivalry fan bases going at each other. And this just, you know, stems off of seeing those games this weekend. Um, and prior to those games, so the last time Panthers and Lightnings played was that 9-2 to two game. Yeah, the Panthers yeah. crushed them 9-2, to two, lit yeah. up Vasilevsky. And then the prior Rangers-Islanders game was the comeback uh, stadium series win for the Rangers. So those two, obviously, great games. Then this past weekend, both, uh, you know, opponents face off. And just the two games, I watched them both. And they were just so amazingly entertaining just from the – on ice product point of view and i can only imagine how that will fuel the two fan bases so i just think if you have comparatively lightning panthers rangers islanders and if you got rangers lightning or or panthers islanders like a panthers islander series 
don't even watch that. Like, like <laughs> yeah. what is the point? Yeah. So I just think it would just give so much more juice to that first round. Not that they need it, but it would just be so valuable. But yeah. that, we're kind of screwed, right? Like, we well, we need the Rangers to, to be the one seed. Yes, they, they should be, uh, just judging Because I don't think it. the Islanders can catch Tampa, you know, like... No, the Islanders no. have to come in at the bottom, so the Rangers have to finish ahead of Florida, which I I think they can. I know I, you do, yeah. And Boston, like yeah, Boston's yeah. ahead of Florida right now. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, and I think they will, but um, yeah, it's it's a, it's a funny one. I I I, I watched that Rangers Islanders game, and there's obviously a lot of hate there, but I think the Rangers sweep the shit out of them. Yes. yes. Um, and you know it'd be it'd be entertaining, but I, I like more, you know, I mean. Good God, man. If the Rangers are playing Tampa in the first round, and I'm a Rangers fan. Nightmare and, fuel. And I've, I've picked, I think the Rangers are winning the Stanley Cup. I really do. Uh, and yeah. <laughs> I, what's that? I said, that's crazy. No, it's not, dude. Look at, uh, we can't get off track here. But <laughs> if, like, Igor has woken up, dude. Igor yep. is the best goalie in the NHL right now. And if he's this way, and Roslovich has jumped in, and all of a sudden Kreider and Zeba, or sorry, Johnny Laz, Mika <laughs> are playing. The first line hockey that they can five on five is getting better. I think that they are absolutely a Stanley Cup favorite, or, or a one of. Oh yeah, and they I, can I, win. And, the cup. I, and I like. Don't get me wrong, they absolutely can uh, win the cup. But I just don't um, think they will. if if I am a Rangers fan and I'm looking at Tampa in the first round because I think Tampa has juice in one round. Yeah. I think in one round they're gonna sock someone and then they're gonna die like an old dog, walking back home to be with his family one last time. <laughs> Dude, if you get Tampa. Florida, Tampa, Panthers, Rangers, Islanders, Bruins, Leafs. Oh my God! All in the first oh, round. The, the NHL is going to absolutely nut themselves. Dallas, as they da- should. Dallas, Colorado. That will be and yeah. like Edmonton, LA. Those are all first round. Yeah, yeah. Matchups. That will be CP Bettman's like lying he in did bed, it. the sun shining on his face, and him going, "It's all worked." Dude. Yeah, like that is this format working yep. to perfection. Um, it's just absolutely insane. Let's kick it over to hot ice. Let's get into some big stuff right now, starting with the insane surge of several teams here trying to get into the playoffs. Every week it feels like we keep <laughs> pinpointing a team that's like, okay, this this team's in, this team's in, this team's out, this team's out. Right now we've got the Preds, the Wild, Caps, Islanders, and Sabres, who are all really flirting with the playoff spot to the point where the Preds, I'm like, you're in. Like, dude. they're in. It's nuts. And the Penguins, dude. The Penguins won't oh, go away either. They're <laughs> Look at them. They won't go away. They I don't think so they're getting in. They're dead, dude. They're deader than dead. Well, they're certainly less dead than the fucking Sabres. So if we're going to bring up the Sabres here, we're going to bring up the Penguins. Uh, <laughs> so fair. <laughs> but the fact that the Sabres have the same amount of points as the Penguins is so embarrassing for the Penguins. Yes. Like, the Sabres have been D- DOA since game 15 of the season. Yep. And well, the, both of them... Both those teams should be comfortably in the playoffs, oh, and they crazy. both should be humiliated. It's absolutely crazy. Um, what bums me out is I have been I cannot waver from I think the Caps are terrible. I've been saying that since game one, so I will not change <laughs> my opinion. The Caps are terrible. Um, Isn't it funny too? I'm sorry to jump in. How we talked just like we did last year. They're selling off assets like dude, Michael Jackson, yep. and over here they're like we he actually might be in the playoffs. It makes no sense. Um, crazy. And the Islanders who. I just don't enjoy watching that much. Oh, they're they're so boring to watch. And Other I know everyone the, like the, the Islanders fans line. hate that when we're like the Islanders are boring. They're like, shut up, we're not boring. That's the oldest take I've ever heard in my life. And I'm like, well, you're kind of you're kind of boring, and you blow massive leads in the third period every game. What are you, the paradox? What are you, the Vermont flex, dude? This is insane. So uh, I don't for the listeners. That's a reference to us sucking. Yeah, those are our <laughs> bad teams. Um, but I actually think. They have the best chance. I'm still believing in Detroit. That was just an insane skin. We're going to get to that in a second. But um, And this kind of feels like last year. Uh, who, who The Panthers got in the last game of the year last year, I think. They were the eighth seed. I don't know if it came down to the very last yeah, game. Yeah, but the but Islanders got in. They were the, it, like, No, they were both. They were all a sneaky. They were they were all battling. Buffalo oh, no, was this in is what there, it was, too. Though. The Islanders last year were the wings right now where they were in and all these teams were surging. Yep. And I was like, no way the Islanders make it. They yeah. just don't have enough juice. And they just 
stayed in. And I was yeah. like, oh. <laughs> and, and they kind of won out. Too. Yeah, yeah, like and they, good for them. And I, I think and hope Detroit does that this year. And I'm just kind of like, wow, there's so much parity coming up here. Look at these teams up their ass. But they're like, dude, we're fine, and we're going to yeah. make it. But if any of those teams gets in, I actually would put my money on the Islanders. It's really um, it's interesting because I want to move over to the West teams yeah. in a second. But I'm with you. I feel like we, we called the Islanders boring in our season preview, and a lot of the fans, like yeah. you said, were like, that's such a shit take. It's, it's an old take. And there was a period this year where they weren't boring. They were playing really well. Bo Horvat has been great, mm-hmm. great for this team. Uh, Matt Barzell has had an amazing season. Yeah, th- I'm Their so defense happy for him. is so good. I think Sorokin has been so bad yes. per his standards this year. I called him the best goalie in the league. And he has just not been close to that. They're minus so, twenty, dude. So I, I'm I'm taking a pee pee whack on that one. Like he's been so subpar per his standards, and I don't really think he's shown any flash this season of what he can be. So I'm with you. I want the playoffs to to end exactly how it is. Yeah. Uh, for me, the wild card teams, Tampa's not really in that category because they have such wily vets on that team. I want the two wildcard teams to be the two teams who are most po- capable of an upset, okay. uh, of a of a chaotic yeah. performance. And the Detroit Red, Wing, Red Wings are absolutely that. Yeah. I think the Buffalo Sabres are absolutely that. Yeah. I would rather Buffalo get into the playoffs than Pittsburgh, New York, or Washington. Pittsburgh, New York, or Washington, as, and by New York I mean the Islanders, them getting into the playoffs, they're going to do exactly what you think they're going to do. Yeah. Buffalo might be insane. (laughs) That might be chaos. Detroit might be chaos. And like I said earlier, I could definitely see Tampa unloading everything they have left in one series. And And that's that's going to be be devastating for one of the top two teams. Scroll to the West, Blake. So yeah, moving to the West, like we said, Nashville comfortably, comfortably in a playoff spot. And they have been on an unreal rip. They're eight, Oh, and two in their last 10 on a current two game winning streak, playing sick hockey. Yeah. Love to see it. And then, unbelievable that Vegas oh. is currently a wild card team. Uh, they're not really in jeopardy just yet, but the Blues and Minnesota are definitely right there. And Minnesota is playing some pretty good hockey. Yep, absolutely. Um, this is another one where I'm like, just no, it's, and it's fun. Don't get me wrong, but this is another one where I'm like, ooh, a lot of drama for these last two spots. And I'm like, no, there isn't. The, yeah. Those, that's the, the eight teams you're looking at are the eight teams that are going to make it. Yeah. Um, but crazy that Vegas is even, we're even having this conversation. Even crazier that the Canucks could catch Vegas in the first round. And I'm like, you talk, you talk about like being the yeah. Rangers and catching Tampa. Imagine being the Canucks and being like, we finally put a season together. You know what's also nuts, man? Edmonton can catch Vancouver. Uh, it, Edmonton has three games in hand right now, and if you give them three wins, yep. which I, I no one hates games in hand more than I do, yep. they would be two points away from them. And Vancouver's kind of falling right now with Demko out. Yep. Five, yeah, three, and right, two in right their last that. ten. Yep. Like, yeah, that, that would be that would mental. Be mental. No, I think yeah, those last two spots are uh, the Preds and the Preds to lose and the Vegas to lose just because of who they are Agreed. and who like, they have on. on their yeah. roster. And yeah, the 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 uh, Canucks fans and, and management would be so rattled to oh, end dude, up disaster. drawing uh, absolute disaster. Vegas, Vegas, and Mark Stone in the first round. Yep. Um, um, Vegas has gone fourteen, fourteen and two since January first. That's crazy. It's dude. the sixth worst record in the league since then. Man, and they had that crazy dip. Dude, I swear to God, man, they did the same thing. It's probably a little bit longer this year. Yeah. lasted longer. But the same thing happened last year when Jack got hurt. And they sucked all of January. And everyone was like, oh, Vegas is bad. Mm. And, then, and then Mark Stone went on LTIR and whatever. But it's like, then they got healthy. And everybody was like, holy hell, dude. They yeah. are nasty. I, I want it to be very clear to the listeners. Mark Stone is very hurt. Yeah, he is. There's a very significant chance we don't see him in the first round of the playoffs, if at all. So that... They're getting slept on again. Aiden Hill's a factor, his level of play and all that stuff. But yeah, they, they that is just a crazy situation in Vegas. I would be so annoyed, so annoyed if I was a top West team right yeah. now. We'd possibly looking down the barrel of that. Yeah. I will say credit to Minnesota. Like the Blues rattle me as a fan because I go... They've been they, very good recently. <laughs> I know, and they aren't good. They have no right. <laughs> they are not good enough to do this. And not that like... We, we, what, what draft pick are you really arguing about when you're kind of like this mid-tier team? But they just like... This 
isn't helping in any way. Yeah. Like they're not going to make it. I don't think they're that good. You're hurting your, your draft capital. <coughs> not that anyone wants to play that way, but you know what I'm saying? The Wild, I actually give a lot of respect to because this should have been a playoff year for them, mm -hmm. and they were in the gutter. And to have some fight here actually I think means a lot to that fan base, to that franchise. They're doing the same of themselves that they're do that the Blues are doing that I just talked about. But this this was a disaster season from the Wild. So to get in the mixer, I give them credit for that. That's a good good. I, I agree. Um, I do just think it's just too much. It's too much to ask. They they have seventy four points with, you know, less than twenty games left. They just you can't do that. I don't think you can climb this mountain. But I agree. I respect the fight. So typically, it's 96, 97 points is what gets you in in that, yeah. in that last uh, seed. So, yeah, the the Wild would roughly need to go eight and three in their last fourteen games to have a chance. Yeah. To, to make it. So, it, it a lot of these teams that are on the outside Hold on. looking that math doesn't make sense at all. Uh, sorry, eleven, eleven and three in fourteen games. Yeah, eleven and there three. You there you yeah. go. Oh, yeah. Pardon me. Um, yeah, so they have they you know they have a pretty tough road ahead, and, and like even that's then, eleven and three, like that's a lot to ask. A rip. And even to then, it's not season. a guarantee that you, yeah. you're in. Um, but on that topic, let's kick it to a couple teams that are on the down yeah. slope, and that is the Red Wings and the Flyers. Uh, we talked a bit about the Red Wings last episode, so we don't need to dive into it too much. But I think they're one and eight in their last nine games. The Red Wings, people fighting at practice, um, just a disaster. And the Flyers, man, for me. Tons of credit to him for holding on as long as they have. With once the the craziness happened with Carter Hart being gone, we kind of were like, well, they're dead. Yep. Uh, but here they are, dude, still, still third. And that one to me is going to be such a devastating thing to witness if here in the last 14, 15 games or so, yeah, they fall out. The Islanders get, slide get into slot. three. Which and, is, uh, yeah, I've been saying that. And forever. the Flyers don't even get that wild card spot, mm -hmm. which is very, very possible. But you had an interesting take, Blake, uh, that their rec what's their record since January 1st? 15, 14, and three. So, so. also brutal. Yeah. yeah. And Four, five, and one in their last 10, two game and that's, losing streak. You know, the Carter Hart stuff happened around all stars so end of end of january so th they were kind of they weren't playing they haven't been great playing great hockey in 2024 at all and listen i we have a lot of flyer fan friends yeah and there i was like talk about the flyers and i was so on board at the beginning of this year, yeah being like, this too. is amazing <laughs> like what a run they're doing and torts has just been the man all year uh, so i'm not i truly am not actively rooting for their demise like i don't wish ill will yeah. towards my buddies i don't ish, wish ill will towards the flyers but they to me, just feel like a team. Like you were talking about before, I want teams in the playoffs that could stir some shit up. The Flyers at this point feel like cannon fodder to me. Mm. That I'm like, just just go away. Okay. Go away peacefully into the night, and I'm sorry. I'm sorry, because your beginning of season was so cool. Yeah. But it's now uncool. What do you think about this take? Of the two teams there that are sliding very terribly, the Detroit Red Wings and the Philadelphia Flyers, I think it's a bigger disaster if Detroit doesn't make playoffs than Flyers. And that yeah. seems like a crazy take because Detroit is currently the second wild card team, and Philly's been and Philly has been all third year. all season. All year, I think it's a bigger disaster if Detroit falls out than Philly, Be I, because of the where the two teams are, how their rosters look right now. I think it's a bigger disaster for Detroit. I think I'm with you, especially on their timelines. Like Detroit was ready to compete for a playoff spot this yeah. year and feels like they had it, and then went in this ridiculous implosion. I take a little bit of umbrage with that because. You say they were ready to complete for playoffs this year, but not a lot of people, including you, had yeah. them getting in. But I would say that was the topic. Like everybody was like, "Is it Detroit or Ottawa? Like who's coming for that last yeah. spot?" Like that was the conversation. Yeah, and everybody was like, "This Philly's eighth. Yeah, you know, like literally nobody. That wasn't even a conversation. Yeah. So the fly, what a run, dude. But the Flyers, like, if you just miss playoffs here as Philly, you go, well, yeah, hell of a year. And like w building towards the future, if you fall out and you're Detroit, I agree. You're like. And you didn't have to make playoffs this year, just where you were a week ago. Yeah. You're like, Fuck even a month Christ. ago. Yeah. Like they yeah. were coming for it. Do you, if you're Philly, do you do everything you can to pull Mitch Koff into this lineup right now? I don't think there's anything they can do. Yeah. That's, I, the, I don't, I don't, I, I don't know KHL how. KHL is just such a different beast and, and he's a prominent player over there right now, too. He's, he's dominating, team. dude. So I can't imagine there's no. any shot of them pulling him, pulling <sighs> him over. Um, so crazy. But exciting times for him. Yeah. No, I think, uh, I mean, they're 3, 4, and 1 in March so far. It's it's almost like that first two months of the season 
where or yeah, the, yeah. The, this season when they were just on fire and everyone was like, oh whoa, and now they're still sticking around. It's almost like to this point, the guys in the room, if they don't make the playoffs, that will be such a gut punch for them. Don't yeah. get me wrong, um, yeah. But I think it's like yeah, like you said, like it doesn't matter if they get in it's or okay. not because go you're sleep. not winning. Just go to yeah. sleep. Yeah, go to, you've go now done a good thing. Yeah, playoffs are set. Philly, Detroit, one, two, zero. Wait, wait. In the playoffs. I, I don't understand the question. When the playoffs are set, yep. Philly and Detroit, one of them, two of them, oh, or zero oh, oh, of them oh, got are it. in the playoff picture. Yep. Okay. Uh, one. Zero. I Damn. Think the, I think the <laughs> Islanders and Caps are coming on their heels. I love that. <laughs> two. No. I think it stays. I think it stays as is. Next topic. Hockey is back in Atlanta. Maybe. 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 Uh, well, actually, definitely. But when? We don't know. <laughs> At least that's my take. Here's uh, the deal. We've had whispers and discussions about Salt Lake City and Utah this year. We've had discussions about Atlanta. We've had discussions about Houston. It feels as though Utah and Atlanta are the big cities in a possible relocation or expansion. The situation going on in Arizona. Blake, fill in, the, fill in the blanks for me here, but there is a plot of land that the Arizona Coyotes ownership is currently bidding on to build a new arena for said team to keep them in Arizona. If that doesn't work, people are saying that yeah, this might be here, dude. the last straw. And bye <laughs> to Coyotes hockey in Arizona. Um... I'd like to leave it to you. I'd like to I'd like to hear what you think before I go on. I'm told that this piece of land, I'm told, like I just this the facts are the piece of land is north of Phoenix but in the Scottsdale area, yeah. correct? That has been the problem in the past of mm -hmm. just like wherever the rink was, it's like so it takes hours for fans to get there. It's a nightmare. So trying to be in Scottsdale where it's like super populated and fun area for young fans and people, that would be a solve. Yeah. So to me, it always felt like if they were ever going to stay, you had to go here. Yeah. So good. We are in the right direction. Um, what I find funny is like, they're like, you to the owners, like, you have to win this bid yeah. to get this land or you're moving. So I'm like, then win it. You're like billionaires. Just like win the bid. <coughs> How hard could it possibly be to win the bid? Do you want a team here or not? Yeah. Um, if so much so to put my tinfoil on, if they don't win the bid, I'm like, then this is all a ruse. Like you didn't even want that. Like the team was supposed to leave and we've heard, and maybe it was runes. I can't remember, but somebody was like, there's cool manipulation is the wrong word, but, um, there's ways to be like, s sell your team to Utah or whatever, and then use that money to pay for like the new expansion team fee or whatever it is. Like you can, you, a team can leave Arizona and then be back in Arizona a year or two later, you know? So if they don't win this bid, I'm like, well, there's there's a master plan here going on yeah. and the team's going to be back in Arizona yeah. anyway. But it's it seems just, way I, simpler to win the fucking bid and just keep the team here and put expansion teams there later. I want to slow that down for, for listeners because yeah. what, what CP is saying is the ownership group that owns the Coyotes could sell and then take that money to build another new Arizona team. Not like that same team would go back and forth is what you're saying. Yes, yes, yeah. Um, I, I can't wrap my head around how overly complicated so many of these ownership groups make these things. Learn, just learn from these new teams. Learn from a lot of these new arenas and see the flaws and then see the, the great successes. Because I look at UBS, yeah, where the Islanders play. Great, great barn. It is a fucking nightmare to get there. Like, it is very inconvenient to get there. I look at Florida Life. Amazing barn. Horrible to get to. Yep. The fact that that place is in Sunrise, next to, like, a strip mall. Yeah. Not a strip mall. Like, like, a, like a, a, a ridiculous, like, shopping complex. And every, when we went there for All-Star, everyone was in Fort Lauderdale, which is 45-plus minutes away. That is a problem. But then you look at uh, Vegas and Seattle— and uh, even Detroit, with Little Caesars being moderately new, and how close it is to Ford Field, how close it is to the main areas of that downtown. Vegas is right off the Strip. Uh, Seattle is right next to the other professional stadiums. That's where everyone is. 
So when Arizona is talking about relocating and there's even considerations of not being in a super densely populated yeah. area where most of the people are, and I get it, land, there's not always real estate available, but like that has to be priority numero uno. Yep. So I want the Coyotes to stay in Arizona. Same. I think it's a place, I think Arizona is awesome. We're going there for a bachelor party. Like it's a destination. Mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of fun stuff going on in places like Scottsdale and places like Tempe. And I know that they had a bid that didn't work in Tempe recently, but I think that would be one of these places where pro athletes, pro hockey players are, would want to live, would want to have a home for their family and have their kids growing up in these areas. So I want that to work. I've said what I said about the Utah situation. I think Utah in, in the NBA, the jazz are, are it's like top three every season yeah, yeah. of selling out there. They're, it's a big ski area. I think a lot of people would find themselves, or, or I think that would be a good situation. That could go very well. Yeah. I will be so disappointed as an NHL fan if another Atlanta team gets there. Yeah, you've always said that. I, I think it is so stupid. I think there are some Southern markets that work. I think there are some Southern markets that don't work, that don't make sense. And to me, the fact that this would be third time, the third time for Atlanta, and dude, the Thrashers were a disaster. <laughs> a fucking disaster. And uh, to me, it's just of all of the places that we could plop an NHL team, I can't believe that we're talking about Atlanta again. And it's clearly one of those things where there's so many different factors at play and the fan bases and the players are not the number one things that are being thought about. And that's why I don't like yeah. it. Yeah. It's a cool city though, dude. And if they make it work, I think it, that would be good. Is it though? I'm, I'm, I'm right here to say, dude, I, I'm so sick of this narrative that Atlanta is this cool city. I've never been, um, but yeah, I, I hear mixed reviews. I hear positive things. I hear negative things. I think it's, I think like you said, there's other factors that are involved in yeah. this besides the fans and the players. Money talks. Money talks. Yeah, like, baby. I think the it's NHL is, is trying yeah. to get a billion dollars is the price tag they want for that next expansion team. And once someone's willing to pay for it, they don't care. They're gonna yep. put that team in the league once the money's shown and, and atlanta's coming, atlanta atlanta's a big business city dude there's yeah. a lot that goes on and, and I, also i don't mean to talk shit about atlanta i, I said is it with a question mark yeah. i I'm i curious. don't know like i've been to atlanta twice and cool but i wasn't i i didn't have the immediate smack in the face of damn this place is sick yeah and i just think and and to be fair does salt lake city do that does scottsdale do that i don't know either but I just think of the three, I would prefer Arizona and Salt Lake City. I got good news. You're getting all three, buddy. Yeah, yeah there you go. <laughs> if, In a few years, we're going to have all three. If there Arizona could have you know, found a way to build this arena, and, and not this year, but prior, they could have been like Vegas, where like guys Dude. are wanting to go there instead of any other team. Like Arizona would... Like I, I really hope the franchise stays Me there, too. but it really does seem like Bettman's putting the pressure on them and kind yeah. of being like... This is your last straw. Like he's been quoted as saying in regards to this arena bidding situation, we still have time. Yeah. That the way he's quoting on things and the way he's putting things is like, look, it's not a for sure that this team is moving, but like this is kind of show it, show that you actually want it. So yeah. we could, you know, this could come to fruition as soon as this off season. Yeah. If you it's get crazy. if you get a brand new facility in uh, like the close Scottsdale mm -hmm. area. That's the facelift, though, right? Yeah, like that's the again. I really think for players, we talk about all the time. If you're a player, where's the place you would want to go? If you snapped your fingers and all of a sudden the Coyotes had a brand new facility, amazing new hockey-specific arena yeah. with a practice facility right in Scottsdale, where homes are cheap, great golf. Like that would be one of those places where I'd be like, "Yep, I wouldn't mind going there." Trade for Matthews. So that could be it. Yeah. Boom. Yeah, so captain comes home. Atlanta came into the league the first time in 72 and the second time in 97. So, yeah, third time's the charm, maybe. Yep. I hate it. <laughs> it would be wild for But I'll give him a again. chance. I'll give him a chance. But that is crazy that a city would get three cracks at it. Yeah, is, that would be wild. So that's why I say, like, there's must be something why the NHL wants to keep giving Atlanta a shot. There's got to be some money that's talking yeah. there. Bettman's, Bettman's got the Delta Sky Miles card. Yeah. And he's like, dude, I listen, 
Atlanta's the hub, dog. I got <laughs> to use it. Yeah. I gotta <laughs> Come use on, dude. <laughs> Other possibly super exciting news, and I say possibly for a specific reason that I'll get into, but today we got some news dropped on us that Amazon is going to be giving NHL fans a very specific hockey show, a lot like Drive to Survive, Full Swing, uh, a lot like Quarterback that Netflix just came out with the NFL that is going to be following 10 to 12 NHL stars what do you guys think? Actually, Blake, read the tweet from Chris Johnston's question. Yeah, so from Chris Johnston, uh, and because the, the NHL GM meetings are going on this week, mm -hmm. uh, so that's where we'll we'll get a lot of news over the next couple of days. Where they said they're fine with OT, you two losers. So congratulations. Oh, they did? Yeah, we can regroup forever, oh. dude. That's <laughs> awesome. BS. Uh, interesting nugget coming out of, the, out of today's NHL GM meetings. A couple managers mentioned that the league has signed on to do a behind-the-scenes series with Amazon that will center around 10 to 12 star players due for a fall release so i don't know if that's this coming fall i think which... it is i think they've been oh shooting they've been it. shooting it this season. i think but maybe it'll be um off season preseason where they shoot it and then it will be it'll be like a hard knocks that's like oh i would hate that like the quarterbacks one was so cool the way they followed it all throughout the season okay great segue blake <laughs> the reason i asked what you guys think about this i thought quarterbacks sucked Really? So I thought the first couple episodes were okay. Other other than that, I thought it got obnoxious. I thought part of that was due to some yeah. of the subjects. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't think it was a good show. Now, I agree with you that Hard Knocks, it, Hard Knocks is electric, clearly. Yeah. Yeah. And it has given us some, some of the best sports entertainment moments of the last multiple decades. And they do in season now Hard Knocks too, which is yes, which is cool. They have started doing yeah. that. Or it's it's the same. If you like Hard Knocks, I like in season Hard Knocks too. The, oh, there's another show called In Season. Yeah, yeah like they and they did the Dolphins this year, like during oh. the season, like oh, shit. straight up. Yeah. God, I'm so tapped out of NFL. It's unbelievable. Um, okay, that's cool. I, my thing with Hard Knocks was there is a part of me that's like, ah, shit. I I want to see you know how the season goes yeah. for these guys. I think if you've never watched All or Nothing. That, I think, is one of the best, like, in-season sports yep. pieces of content that comes out. For me, there was a Leafs All or Nothing. Yeah. And I thought it was awesome. Me too. You guys did? I yeah. thought it was awesome. Jumbo, dude. He it, was it, it, was felt, it felt <laughs> similar to the old days of 24-7, Road to the Winter Classic, yes. which is, I, to be honest, I think that's the best inside that's coverage show line. of all time. Mm -hmm. I think that this has a chance to be great. It has a chance to be horrible. Yeah. yeah, I'm very, very, very curious to watch and see how it does because I don't think this is a lock. I don't think this is a slam dunk. What I don't love about the 10 to 12 specific players thing is, as we've seen firsthand, by and large, NHL guys don't love this. Like, they don't love the spotlight. Mm -hmm. Whereas I thought 24-7 was so sick because it was a camera on the boys yeah. in the locker room. Yeah. And they were kind of like, oh, it's not just on me. Like, I can I can hang out, so I worry that the spotlight it could get a little too alienating, and that's what I'm curious to think. What you guys think? Uh, I, I'm with you. I uh, curious to see what you guys. I think. thought quarterbacks struggled with their with the people they got for me. You know, like some episodes just weren't that interesting to me because of the quarterback. And I obviously like hockey much more than I like football. And I also, having worked in the TV business a long time, know it's hard to get. Got you know yeah yeah hundred percent every star quarterback wants to be on their TV <laughs> show so I highly doubt the NHL would drop a show like this with twelve third liners <laughs> so it's gonna be guys um, but my fear is it will vary my opinion of it will vary so drastically with who they get that's my fear yeah um, and I share a little bit of your concern of like especially if it's off season but even if it's in season if they're just kind of like yeah here's my routine like I. I I yeah. have some shots of me at home. I go to the rink, whatever. There's a there's a tame <clears throat> excuse me. There's a tame version of it that I'm like, okay, whatever. And I'll watch every second of it. Don't get me wrong, but there's just a tame version where I'm like, yeah, you got me all riled up, got me all torqued up here, and now yeah. it's not that great. Yeah. But there is a sick version though. Agree. There is an extremely sick version where it's fucking McDavid and Matthews and Pasta and you know all the boys you think and it, Yonner would be featured in it I mean Connor no dude but yeah <laughs> but like can you imagine you know if it was like the top guys all opening up in season amazing I just don't think we'd get there it I think so much of it depends on the producers and the directors oh, they yeah. need they need uh uh Hugo dude they need the yeah. guy who did the Beckham doc yeah because he 
that was that's the best sports doc I've ever seen. Yep. And it's because of how comfortable Beckham was. So my question for you guys, I want to go around. I want your top five. Who guys. do you want? And maybe not who I, I want you to think about it specifically like this. I'm not asking who do you want. I'm saying I'm asking you who does this show need? Because you right now you might say Sidney Crosby. You would want that. I want. But I'm I, telling you that if under perjury of death, Sidney Crosby was made. He, he was forced to do this. It wouldn't be good. So you're saying. He'll be guarded, Sid. Like you, uh, you, you want me to pick a person who I think would drop the guard. Yeah, because no, he's I, not, not. I don't just get to go. He's not Sid gun. if he drops his yeah. guard. Okay, fair. All right, give me Ike's. Give me, and give, you can jump in at any point. Yeah, shout him out if you know one. Ovi. Like I feel like he would go. He'd be pretty okay. chill. That'd be a good one. Um. I almost said Bobar Bobrovsky, which I wouldn't hate. I just, wouldn't be a bad yeah, one. Just, Dude, goalies are yeah, weird, but the yeah. second you can get them going. Then you might be on to something. Yeah. Then you might be on to something. All right, maybe Bob. Let me, let me put a pin on Bob for a second here. Um, No, not Nate. I think, all right, I'm just going to jump in. Yeah, yeah, do it. Uh, Nylander is a lock. Mm, good one. William Nylander is, I think, like the number really one good star one. of the show. And I even put him over Matthews. Same. I think Matthews would be great as well. But I think Willie yeah. would really shine in this. I love him. I love uh, you. Would get so much of Toronto, which would be amazing. Yep. You would get the really wonderful international component too. I would love to see, you know, him popping over to Sweden and yep. seeing what's going on with that. I love that one. I think it's a no-brainer. I like the Ovi idea, but I think we, I think our window has passed. I think yeah. ten years ago Ovi would have. But been. that might well, he might give you he might give you gold because of that though. And I think the star power might carry it, yeah. but I think Ovi has settled down a little bit, and and you know yeah, but you get young Ovi though, you get little Ovi. Okay, I don't. Uh, this isn't a kids show. Yeah, I, well, yeah, be good content, no, no. I think. Um, I think one of, if not both of, the Kachucks. I was gonna say Brady. Uh, yeah, uh, Brady. I think, I think both of them are are a content machine. Should get a joint app. That would be. Uh, cool. yep, and that that's a that's part of it that you would have fun with. Um, I think. You'd get Big Walt with that. Yeah. And they're just not afraid, man. Every yeah. time they do any sort of content with any of us, they're the best. They're so funny. They're so open. They're such good people. And they're superstars, I think, locks for them, yeah. for sure. I got a couple. Oh, I have, I have. Yeah, go. Jump in, boys. Pasta. I don't know how you, you two haven't said that. I, Another one I, I don't know. I've been holding back because I, I almost I feel like I get too one. much pasta. Yeah. And and the, that's a carb-heavy diet, dude. I don't need I don't need too yeah. much pasta. <laughs> he would be great. I think um, he would, too. He He'd would be, be great. Another one I would also, be great. I get so afraid of the teams that I love. I don't like when they do stuff like this. Well, I was going to I was gonna suggest Swayman. Oh, he'd be fantastic. He'd be, he'd be an absolute <laughs> be star. I, th- I, I just think you've got to get at least a couple goals. He can't do it. He can't, we can't have Swayman on because then the Bruins are going to have to pay him 20 mil a year if yeah. the whole world sees how f-ing cool yeah. he is. Yeah. So. <laughs> he might get too big for us, yeah. too. He's you know, like Honestly, Jeremy is... Anyone who meets him immediately knows he's the greatest person on earth. And if all of a sudden he was a star of a show like this, he'd become the biggest star in the league. Honest to God. Yeah. Unbelievable. Uh, well, this is kind of a hot take because he's not really colorful. He's more grumpy. JT Miller. Mm. I think it would be funny to see oh. like one of the grumpy guys in the NHL. Interesting. kind of like goes through everything like they still love it and they love the sport but they're all they look like they're always that's funny pissed off yeah they look like they're always mad at someone or something uh and last but not least you guys have already said matthews but roman yossi i think mm. i don't know if he's that interesting if he's that colorful he's not really young anymore but i think it could be interesting and people will just like to watch that um, i i agree with that last part i do worry that yos is the crosby caliber yes. where he's like no 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 yeah. i'm not opening the door to all of this this person is so much looser than crosby and potentially yosi or whatever but i don't know i doubt he would do it but dewey would be he would never do electric. it electric he would be electric he would um, never do also, it also this person would do it brent burns i think would be an awesome like just what a crazy life and like yeah his his yeah backstory his preparation the way he gets on with the boys if he would do it yeah yes. oh jarvy jarvy would be that, okay that was my yeah. I, I think seth jarvis is a no-brainer very similar uh 
obviously interesting situations going on with him, but Z is uh, that is entertainment yeah, good all day long. Um, I really like so. I mean, God, I need Seth Jarvis and Tro- Troy uh, Trevor Zegers in the same place. Yeah, that would be the funniest yeah. car ride of my entire life. Um, I like thinking about it of teams that need it. Yeah. Uh, so Z, I love it for that. Yeah, Troy yeah, Terry, yeah. I think we know yeah. Troy Terry so funny. Um, I, 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 I need a Russian in here. Yeah, bread I, man, maybe. I need a Russian in here. I don't think Dolan would let bread do it. <laughs> Give me Kirill, dude. Oh yeah, Minnesota yeah, could use this. I think yes. Kirill is funny. We've heard so many funny stories about him. He's a certified superstar. I think a show following Kirill Kaprizov in Minnesota would be electric. What about Malkin? I, he might, probably might be too old. I, not I, a big I, enough star. What about couldn't, couldn't agree more. It's the Svechi's not Russian. He's like he's <laughs> Russian, but he's not Russian. Didn't yeah. he play? He played in the O. Yeah, yeah, like played for Bears. Oh, Cooch, so, dude, Cooch. That would be sick. You, he would go through the motions. He'd be like, oh, yeah, I'll do it. I'll do it. And <laughs> yeah, he'd funny. show up and he'd be like. That would be funny. Just cracking Bud Lights <laughs> yeah. on his yeah. couch, dude. He would do <laughs> that shit. That would be sick. Um, yeah, I, I, I love the Malkin shout-out, but I do think it's similar to Ovi. I think this, the time has passed. Yeah. Like, they're prime for, yeah. for on TV entertainment. Another yeah. one similar to that is Sagan. He would have yeah. been great oh, five, been ten great. years yes. ago. But, God, yeah, he would have been too great. Old now. Uh, but, again... I love I love this in theory. Yep. In practice, I I need to see it work because yeah. it'll be a bummer. And I'll tell you what, I am juiced to see who they are when we get yeah. that announcement, because it's going to be a big. That's you're you're waving a pretty significant flag to the league if you're one of these ten to twelve guys that says yes to this. Well, don't and, you think? Well, so in the quarterback show, I know they got like they got paid to do it. Like yeah, the, the athletes. Um, and so that's three guys for the whole season. So this is 10 to 12, which I think is too much. Yeah, right. If you're going to get the good quality out of them. And so then the question becomes, how much are they getting compensated out of this? Yeah. So, and which will, you know, we probably will never know. But it it's it's going to, con- you know, lie on the fact of how much are these guys going to find the value in it? Not only compensation wise but like image wise and and you know how it's going to make them look and perceive to the public and to their teammates that's yeah. why i think that's what what i mean by the flag yeah just think about it yeah. think about we've all been in the locker room before true it's different i think for a guy like patrick mahomes when he does this because the chiefs go what a, you're the 500 million dollar man like whatever you're 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 doing state farm commercials you're doing head and shoulders commercials you're already a mega star with mega endorsements you doing the show is one more camera in the room i don't give a shit mm-hmm. this is different different the second one of these guys says yes i'll do this that locker room is going to pile on them in a positive way i would hope so fast like they're going to be like oh f- Big superstar over here. He yeah. got his Amazon cameras following you around. It's also going to make certain guys be like, "I think about Crosby. If a yeah. teammate of Crosby's does this, he's like, do not come anywhere f-ing near me, dude. Like, I obviously he's not actually going to yeah, do yeah. that. But there, there are definitely guys who will be very aware of the camera that you have now brought into this locker room. That's interesting. Yep. I think this is going to be fun to look at. Taking a quick break to tell you guys about SoCo Whiskey. It's the perfect blend of fruits, spices. It is the ready-for-anything spirit. I'm telling you, it's one of my favorite drinks around. When I was in college, SoCo and Dr. Pepper was my absolute jam. Anytime you're at a party, anytime you're watching the game, whatever mood strikes you, this is the perfect drink for you. No matter the moment, Southern Comfort is your ready-for-anything drink. Next time you're at the bar, try a SoCo Sour Shot. It's one part SoCo, two parts Sour Mix, and enjoy the night. Let's kick it into overtime and do some armchair GM. Blake, hit us with the uh, updates from last week and then the theme of this week. Came back strong after a down week, that's for sure. Thank God, dude. Um, CP, you won this week with a score of 33-29, to 29, which updates the season total to 224 to Dan's 216. God, you're killing me. Moose had a couple of talks I saw. Yeah, you had two guys with nine points. Cooch and Rantanen, nine points each. Um, you know, Dan, you picked Flower. He had a good goose egg over the week. but Killed me, dude. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, no, the, the theme this week is players under the age of 23. So kind of an homage to the uh, Team North America back at the old, uh, the most recent World Cup of Hockey. I love it. Um, too. Chris, you got the win. Take I it get, away. I get first pick. Yep. 
Okay, I will take the someone I want you to take during this so bad. Okay. <laughs> um, I will take potentially Psycho first pick here, Brock Faber. Oh, I like it. Getting going on D early. Yeah. I like that a lot. I'm gonna go with Connor Bedard. He's been on yeah. an absolute tear. I think he he knows he wants that rookie of the year. He's playing great. I'm yep. gonna ride the hot hand. I'm going Bedard. Give me Stutzel. Similar hot hand, Lucas Raymond. We just talked about him. It got me fired up. I'll take Jarvie. I oh, love that pick by you. God damn it. Um, I'm gonna go Mo. My boy Mo Sider. Stay with Detroit. I need to get some D in there. Yep. So you never want to load up on one squad, you know. I know. Uh let me take um Luke Hughes. Ooh, interesting. There's some guys here. I like the, I like Ryden. Oh, you know what? I'm going to go Wyatt Johnson. Fuck. I really love Wyatt's game. I like Dallas, the way they're playing right now. There's a couple other forwards in there that I could have gone with, but I love Wyatt right now, so I'm taking him. I think we'll just do the Hughes brothers because I would hate kick myself if I didn't. I'll take Jack to round up my forwards. Okay. I'm going to take the first goalie off the board. I'm going to take Dostal. <laughs> uh, okay, I gotta go goalie. I'll take Dustin Wolf, and then my last D, I'll take uh, Sanderson. Oh, no, nice. No, great pick. All right, that is it for us this week at the Empty Netters Podcast. Please, guys, go to our YouTube, smash that subscribe button, download and like on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, whatever you do. Spread the word. We got some fun stuff coming up. Great episodes. Great interviews. We're getting into the deep, deep, deep days of the end of the season, and it's exciting as hell. It's awesome. Thank you guys so much for your support, seriously. And as always, skate hard.